camera a little early actually, but we're glad. It means we ready to get worshiping Jesus.
still remote and unfortunately um, all of our family will be clear um, start after Monday so our church will we'll send out a church text about this but we figured out that we will miss Mother's Day to get today Mother's Day this year together in church because um, we'll need to still be remote Gloria will still be um, not out of her 10 days or her 14 days, whatever they are faster to stay clear of. And we just want to make sure that everybody, when they come back, we're all clear. So, but we are still remote tonight and hopefully next Wednesday night we should be back together, um, all together, Lord willing. And um, Brother Staten was going to be here with us tonight, but of course we're still remote. And so next Wednesday night, Lord willing, Brother Staten will be with us. And we will have all come through the COVID battle, and we're just going to believe the Lord um, for an amazing service Wednesday night. So we're going to believe him for an amazing service here tonight also. And um, I just thank the Lord. Sister Linda is um, battling a sinus infection, and so she has been very ill this week. Um, and it's sometimes, sometimes some of the after effects of having COVID. Your body's just weak, and it picks up some other things. And so she's really had to battle. I covet your prayers for my mother tonight. She is in service with us, but she's real weak. And so um, I can't say that we, she won't be up here singing when we get to the choir, but I can say that for right now, she's just not strong to do it. So please pray for Sister Linda. I know you have been. I, I ask you to keep praying for her. Pray for all of us to have strength to continue to go forward and do all the things the Lord has shown us to do. Um, it's, it's really, um, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose in Christ Jesus. And so we know that it's going to work for our good and we also know that it's working for a lot of others good because we understand better what some have faced. We understand um, not fully. Thank the Lord we have not faced all the things that other families have had to face. But we have faced sickness and it prolonged sickness. And I believe Sister Linda worded it that she has felt the sorrow of the world um, and the sorrow you feel for others who have faced this disease. Um, Brother Don heard from people, co-worker um, that has family in India, and it is terrible, and um, just, um, it, it is, we really need to pray for our world that the Lord will move, um, but we are going to pray tonight, so please remember the people in India, um, please remember my friend Teresa, um, that the Lord would help her tonight, please remember um, Heidi and Sister Cherie, and um, remember Sister Dory. Remember my co my cousin Elin also. She is going through a lot of um, medical tests that the Lord would let um, let the answers come and let healing come. Somebody else have a request tonight in the building? Sure, we'll have some that we will read after church and pray for on the social media platforms. Anyone else have something? Sister Linda? There was a request on Facebook of a husband and wife that had COVID. And for all the people that have COVID, especially this husband and wife. Um, our dear brother um, who was coming to see us, he and his wife, Sister Jackie, Brother Paul and Sister Jackie, please remember Brother Paul, their church is uh, battling the virus and he's sick. Um, they don't know quite what it is, but please pray for Brother Paul. He requested um, prayer for his physical body. They were supposed to go on a trip today um, with their work, and it didn't seem like they were going to be able to. So please remember um, Brother Paul and Sister Jackie, our friends from the ministry. Someone else? Sister Connie Akers. 
church member, Sister Connie Akers, that's uh, battling medical issues and the world of health issues of the world that heal her completely. We appreciate the Akers so much. They are such a great support to us in prayer and word of you. And remember the Hensons. The Lord would continue to strengthen them. Um, and remember Sister Rita, that the Lord would heal her body, strengthen our church. It's been a long time since we've been all together, and that is wearing on people. So, you know, it can be wearing that the Lord would just give everyone strength from these remote services. Anybody else? spoken requests and then um, just let's go to the Lord knowing that he hears our prayer. Sister Linda tell us there was someone who had stage 4 cancer who the Lord has healed. He testified today on um, social media that the Lord has healed him completely. All the tumors are gone and it is completely gone. So please remember that the Lord answers our prayers when we pray and ask in his will and it's his will to heal. So we know that, that the Lord will heal so and, and move and guide. So let's go to the Lord tonight and believe him to move and answer prayer.
Amen. We needed that tenor over here. Amen. Still, over here we needed a tenor. Sweeter, sweeter, sweeter. All right, everybody's wondering about Bill. Bill is over here playing our drums for us tonight. I know he's been um not been doing the bass, so you may not can see him. We'll try to get him to be singing at some point. He's really doing all right. The Lord's been helping him, and um, I thank the Lord for him being able to cover Brother Jose. We're going to be back together, Lord willing, next Wednesday. And uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and go. That was, um, go with our lesson tonight. I think that's a good segue. Love it if somebody would get me something to drink real quick. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for all that he's doing. I thank him. I'm going to tell y'all some stories today. <laughs> we'll get the Bible first. Oh, uh, yes. Will you hand me that black Bible? Appreciate the Lord. Sorry to walk out of there. Bill, stop by up here when you get a chance. So everybody can see you. All of us. If you don't personally know us, you may not know um, that even though um, if you're watching us, and Bill shared this just recently, that he really is not as confident about um, maybe singing He's very confident about playing many instruments, but um, he still would prefer not to be on camera. And that's okay. He's just coming by to say, hey, just, no, he's not. All right. He's, he is really with us tonight. Thank you, Don. This is wonderful. Thank you. Anybody else can bring in another one? <laughs> I'm just telling you, my, <laughs> my family's good to me. Um, before it's over, we'll try to get Bill up here to testify or something for us. So, But I appreciate my family. I tell you what, um, you know, um, I don't. we were talking about this week who's like who. What family member is, is Lori alike and what if Granny's more like Bill or Laney or who. We're all, I guess, you know, everybody has traits, but traits of each other's um, we share some traits I think um, I'm the wonky one so when Loria is wonky um, that's more like me and, and um, Lainey Lainey's peaceful and so Don as you know my husband is quite peaceful he's more it may be like that and um, Bill likes to debate and I don't know who that's like but um, he's he and Loria like to debate sometimes so, um, you know, it's just, it's just funny how we'll have traits um, of others. And um, I just want to tell you that what I want to have the trait like, who I want to have traits of is Jesus Christ. And that's what this lesson is about. And um, some about some things that happened today. Um, you know, I guess... Um, not sure how to start because I, I don't really I, I, um, I don't usually stumble over my words very easily well, that's kind of funny but um, I, I usually don't stumble around to know where to, to go in but I'm going to go in here today I we have faced some battles maybe not as bad of battles as families who have faced um emergency room visits that the people never came out of afterwards. Um, we haven't faced that. We haven't faced a respirator. We haven't faced um, a death from COVID, though we have faced losing um, my dad a year to death to something else. We, we haven't faced what everyone else has, but it does not negate what we have faced. And if you have faced not everyone in your family coming down with it. Thank the Lord, not Ned and Jose and the babies, but um, everyone that, is, that lives right with us and near us. Um, if you haven't faced that, it doesn't negate what you have faced. Right. And so, but today I was having kind of an insecure day. I talked about how Bill's not as comfortable getting in front of the camera. Obviously, I don't have a problem with that. 
but it's still not always my favorite thing to do. Um, on a day where I have faced insecurities about my own mind and my own um, talents and my own abilities, um, it is not an easy thing for me to get up here tonight because I have faced a battle today. So I just want to share some of that with you and what the Lord told me and what scriptures I think um, he showed me that would help. And uh, so today, I, in our ministry, what I like to do is to sing. <laughs> And what I would like to do is, I mean, some days it's not easy to put up a song a day. Lately, it's been even more difficult than it was before because everyone's fighting COVID symptoms. And it's difficult sometimes for any of us to sing or breathe well or um, feel like getting um, presentable. I mean, we're presentable, but feel like you don't look sick um, in front of a camera and, and post that and it can go to, you know, whoever it goes to. And so today I was kind of struggling about the fact that um, I didn't, um, sometimes I don't know the direction that we should go in in this ministry. Um, for instance, how many more CDs should we put out? Should we do them on um, USB sticks for people who don't have CD players anymore? For the people who want CDs, should we make CDs and that? Should we reorder the CDs that we have almost ran out of and pay royalties? Should we, and the list goes on, when we can travel since we've all had COVID, when we think we might could travel, who's going to travel? What's going, what will that, if anyone, are we going to say we're not going to travel? I'm going to just give you a slice of my brain for a minute. And if it, if you can't follow it, let me know. Some, you know, let me tell you that's the way my brain works sometimes. Um, if we travel, sh how should we do that? How, what, who should go? What should be repaid? What should we ask for? Um, I got a phone call today that said you really should um, take more monetary compensation than you are doing, and you should request it. And um, this person loves us. He's, um, you know, and, and would love for us to have that. And all I want to do is put a song up a day to encourage. All we want to do is be a part of our church service and share that with whomever would like to and who would ever get help from it. Um, we've never been about the money. And so all of this is running about in my brain today. Meanwhile, um, you know, I am not feeling that great today. And so I put up a song. And I put up a song because mom was feeling worse than I was. And, um, you know, Lady and Bill still are going to school. And they've got last concerts this week and next week uh, to finish out for some things they're doing. And Gloria can't, she's <coughs> not able to sing. And so, and Don works. And, you know, we're just trying to figure it all out. But the truth is, is today I put up a song. And um, so... I was in Walmart, walking through Walmart, trying to pick up a few things, and um, all those things are running through my brain, and I'm like, Lord, I don't know, I don't feel this real ambition to make this some big thing. I'm, I'm real honest right now. I don't feel ambition to do all of that. I don't, maybe we need to, you know, maybe we need, you know, I'm just going back and forth. How can it just be that I encourage someone to love Jesus and we let you handle all the rest? Or have I missed opportunities that I should be to, to make sure that everyone really, you know, should I push harder? Maybe there's more people if I would push harder that we would minister to. So that's a slice of my brain as I'm walking around Walmart. All of a sudden, I felt these words. Just chase me I'll bring the rest just chase me I'll bring the rest so about maybe a minute later I had a text that said have you seen one of these comments from today's song and 
I mean, I had some peace from that comment. Okay, Lord, just I'm going to just chase you. You'll handle all the rest, right? So I'm just going to chase you. So about 35 seconds, maybe a minute longer, I look down at my phone. I'm in the register, at the register, and somebody says, have you seen this comment? And the comment was not positive. It actually was um, very, um, not very nice about the song that I sang today. Discouraging. Discouraging. Thank you, lady. It was very discouraging on a day when it was hard to get up in front of the camera, on a day when I didn't feel well, on a day when I pushed through. I'm not martyring. That's not what I'm saying. All of a sudden, that just chased me. I'll bring the rest. I went, Phew. I'm, my insecurities mounted and got even bigger and bigger. Not everybody likes what we do. Not everybody cares for the type of music we do. That's okay. Not everybody thinks it's great. That's okay. Even in my own family throughout the years, as I was learning to play and sing, not everybody liked it. That's a hard memory to have. But I do know that that I my style is not everybody's style. So I was my brain was running around like what on earth should we do about everything that I should maybe be doing. Then the Lord said, just chase me, I'll bring the rest. And then somebody said something very discouraging. And I, they said it wasn't intentional to discourage or be mean, but that they would no longer listen to us <laughs> because it was so bad. Um, which is, don't look for the comment, it's gone. But the only reason I'm sharing that is not to disparage that person either. It's to say this, that our insecurities mount up. But Jesus has an answer. He said to me, just chase me, I'll bring the rest. What verse that brought me to was Matthew 6, 31 through 33. Which is open to with Don. Got Don's Bible. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Man, was I thinking about that? Well, should I be doing more? Should I try to make more money? Should I do what should I do with our should I try to make it about money? Should I should I leave? What should I do, Lord? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Well, I'm a Gentile, and guess what? I was wondering if I should be seeking. For your heavenly Father knoweth what you have that ye have need of all these things. And this is the verse the Lord said to me in Lee's terminology. He said it to me in the way I could understand it. Just chase me, I'll bring the rest. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Well, what does it mean to put God first? Really? What does it mean for it not just to be what I seek? Some quote that someone put, they didn't say who it was, but they said, the secret of a happy life is giving God the first part of your day the first priority in every decision, and the first place in your heart. So, I want you to close your eyes for a minute, and I want you to pretend with me, and just pretend for a second that you're lying down in your bed, lying down, and you are, you've slept through the night, and you're going to wake up. And when you wake up, when your eyes pop open, what is the first thought that runs through your brain? Don't say it out loud. I'm just wondering if you can go to that place. If not, tomorrow, what's the first thing when you wake up that you think of? The very first flit that goes through. Because that's really what you're putting first. 
right then. And sometimes it's, man, what do I have to do today? Okay, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Oh, I'm late, the alarm went off wrong. The, I mean, it could be a million things, right, Bill? Can't believe I have to get up at 8.27 and not 8.30. Didn't they know my alarm was gonna go off? We've done that to you, Bill. Um, mine is sometimes, um, I mean, there's just a whole host that I could have. But the truth is, is what should it be? Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Father. Or something about the Lord. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Maybe for some of you in the room, that's what it is. I hope so. For some of you watching, I, I would almost guarantee that's probably Sister Henson. I would think, my dear sister, that happens to her very often. That she opens her eyes and Jesus is on her mind. And uh, I want to attain to that, sister. I know she's with us tonight. Matthew 6, um, or I'm sorry, Romans 8 and 5 says let's go there I'm just going to share a few scriptures I'm going to remind us of somebody in the Bible who probably was struggled to put God first but did it for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit but, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit but for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So Bill, when I read that scripture, did you get two things that it said, if we put God first, we'll have? What were they? For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Life and peace. And so when we are looking at a reason that God wants us to just chase Him and He'll bring the rest. He's going to bring life and peace. Colossians 3, 1 through 4. I wish somebody would look those up for me. And read them. That's what I usually have y'all do. Y'all are quicker sometimes than I am. I know Lane and Bill are. Bill, grab you a Bible and do a sword throw for me. If you don't Colossians 3, 1 through 4. Yeah. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So the Bible says to set your affection on things above, not things on this earth. Well, my family lives on this earth. You know, my affection's on them. But can it be completely on them where I don't think of the Lord? Yeah. Can it be, can worry and doubt and fear and, and I was giving that to Bill. <laughs> um, I mean, the, the secret is giving God the first place in your heart. If, if anything else or anyone else or any even this it is very difficult when you're sick to feel like you can even think of anything else and to push through so but if we be risen with Christ what's it say Laney if we be risen seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God so we're going to seek the things that are above we may I have come to grips with, though I want to be healed, I have accepted that if the Lord chooses that I may my stomach issues may stay with us forever, I hope that doesn't happen and I'm not claiming it. But if so, that I still want to put Jesus first and I want to work for Him until the day I die. I still don't want to be discouraged by that. I want for me to be seeking God first, not giving in to the, the symptoms and the, the problems. Matthew 22 and 37, Bill. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. So, we're supposed to love God with everything. Right? Right. 
all that's within us. And uh, John 15 and 5. I don't want this to beat us down. I just want to encourage us that the Lord is going to help us to chase Him. And He's going to handle the rest. Go ahead, Laney. I am the vine, you the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And that's really what I want to say to all of us, is without the Lord, we really can't do anything. Our family happens to have some musical talent. But the truth is, is it uh, can all be gone in a second. <coughs> do something without the Lord, it will come to nothing. If we are doing it for the wrong reasons or without the Lord, it will come to nothing. And that's why today I was so worried. We've, we've had several people say, well, you ought to do it this way, and you ought to uh, capitalize on this, and you ought to, you'd be able to do so much more if you did this. I mean, lots of sweet, general ideas that people have of how good ideas, we, good ideas perhaps, but very ambitious, worldly ambition ideas that I just were struggling to know. And Jesus said, or the Lord God said, just chase me, I'll bring the rest. And I am going to, that's going to be the way that I'm going to go ahead. Things which matter most must never be at the mercy of things which matter least. Then, both, maybe. But I don't want to let the things that matter the most, my relationship with Jesus Christ, be at the mercy of all of the things that come into our brain to try to control us. Or the fact that we really can't control everything around us. Because that's really some of the biggest problems we suffer from. Is that Everything, especially with everything going on nowadays, doesn't feel within our control. But that's what one of the things that when you give God and you say that I am going to trust Him with everything, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. If I'm going to do that, if He's going, if I'm going to chase the Lord, then He is going to add things like life and food and drink and clothing and basic necessities and, and wants and some good things that we wouldn't have expected. College educations, you know, that's something that's vehicles. We have a 16 and a 15 year old. Things that we wonder, Lord, what do you want and how are you going to work this out and what do you want to do and how do you want it to go? Those things, if we commit our trust to the Lord, he says that he's going to commit to meeting our needs. He's going to be what we can depend on. He's going to be the one that's in control. Right. And we can trust that when we seek him first. But seeking him first means that sometimes you have to tamp down or tell your brain to stop trying to figure it all out. Quiet. I'm going to seek after Jesus first, excuse me. I'm going to seek after him because he's the one that's in control of all of this. I'm not. Right. Be still and know that I am God. So I think about Hannah. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Is it 1 Samuel or 2 Samuel? Let me make sure I wrote it back. First, because he was yeah, the first. The title. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Well, don't let it be said that I know it all, because I sure don't tonight. All right, so First Samuel chapter 1 just talks about a man who had two wives. And one of them could have children and the other one could not. The man really loved um, Elkanah really loved Hannah 
He loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. She was not able to have children. And so she would, she would weep over that. She was very sad over that. And Elkanah said, Why weepest thou? Why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than, than ten sons? Well, she didn't answer in that scripture, but she might, he must not have been because she wanted a child. And so, and Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they drunk. And Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post in the temple of the Lord. Verse 10 says, And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, that thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but wilt give unto thine handmaid a man child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. She vowed a vow that she was going to serve God and seek him above. When she received that child, she was going to give him up. She was not even going to have him all of his life. She promised. I'll have him, and I'll give him to your service. Is that seeking God first? Well, the Lord, Eli, walked up to her and, and uh, marked her mouth, saw that she was quiet, silently praying and uh, moving her mouth, and he, he was angry at her. He said, why are you drunk? What are you doing in here? Get out of here. And Hannah, and, um, Hannah said, no, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. And count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and my grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou have asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. And she went home, and she was able to conceive a child. She bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. So Eli sent her home to have a son, and then when they would go to the temple every year, she was going to bring that son to the temple and let him be in the service of God. And so Hannah went not up the first year. And she said, I will not go up until the child is weaned. And then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord and there abide forever. Bill, will you please read my scripture? Seek ye first, Matthew 6 and 33. Read that again for me. Thirty-three. Then seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So when we go before God and we seek him first, a lot of times that's going to lay down your brain and lay down your will and lay down your thought process and lay down everything of the way you think it should be or the way you wish it could be. You're just going to run after God. And that's what Hannah went and did. She was tired. The other wife made fun of her. She was tired of he wasn't equal to ten sons to her. And she was tired of the way it was going. So she went. Even the priest thought she was an idiot. But she was going to get down to business and seek God for his will first. When she did, the Lord said, you can have what you want. And then she still sought him first. When she, um, on verse 24, it said, it's 1 Samuel, it says, When she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks and an ephah of flour and a bottle of wine and brought it unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh, my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition. 
which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. She turned her son over to be in the service of the Lord. She was willing to. Now, she went home and had a bunch more children. Oh, uh, let's see, how many? Five, Brother Don knew. That's what happens when you read it 37 times or something. How many times? Uh, 38. 38. That was a good guess. <laughs> it's just a random number. I've probably heard you say it. But the truth of it all is, is that when we decide that we're going to seek the Lord first, sometimes we may have to give up things that we wanted. If I wanted our ministry to go into fame, and if I wanted it to be a money maker, we may could do that, Bill. But that isn't what I feel the Lord showed us from the beginning. I didn't feel like it was to make money. We had no idea that it would be as encouraging as it is to others. And so when the Lord told me, just chase me, I'll bring the rest, I'm looking forward to what the rest is. Right. Right. I'm looking forward to what Jesus is going to do with healings and miracles. Stage 4 cancer is a pretty big deal to be healed from them asking a request of us to pray as a group. That's a pretty big deal. I'm looking for some healings. Amen. I'm looking for more peace, for my brain to be shut off and quit worrying so much about all the garbage that really, in the grand scheme of things, doesn't matter. Because I don't know what Bill is going to do with his life or Lainey's going to do with her life, who's going to pay for their college or if they're even going to go or what car they may drive or what things they may do, what Lori is going to do in her school, what Don's job is going to do. All of those things, I can't control any of that other than to ask the Lord if I'm seeking you first Lord will you bring the rest and the other thing that it looks like as it when you say bring the rest is so I don't know that he wasn't just talking about the rest of the stuff he was talking about bringing me rest from all the things that are going around in my brain. And I'm not the only one in this building or under the sound of my voice that has their needing some Lord to bring some rest. Right, the Lord to bring some rest. Just chase me. I'll bring the rest. I want some rest. Go ahead, Sister. You know, Hannah thought it was a privilege Come on. to have Samuel live in under Eli and under that temple. Right. It wasn't, she didn't consider it a horrible sacrifice. She, I don't think. She made him a little coat every year and Went brought it to him. him. And she, it was a privilege for her son to be there. And for God to allow her son to be there. Well, Eli could have said no. Right. Right? I mean, Eli was an old man fixing to raise a little boy. Right? I mean, that wasn't. But it she, was God ordained. Yes. And, it, and she. It was important. Yes. Samuel was important to Vital. the kingdom of God. Vital to the kingdom of right. God. So somebody asked this past week if, if my children enjoy what we're doing or are they forced to do it it, it was not me what he was asking if he watches as I hope he does because I get a chance to answer it if they're forced to do it um, and we said they are not forced I was hoping one of them would see it and they would answer but I, they didn't get a chance to but um, they are we there are days we have to push them a little bit to get done but it's just like we have to push with time more than effort and energy sometimes. Sometimes it's like, well, I don't I I don't have a song. After the sixth time of doing the same song. After the sixth song, time of doing the same song, Bill's over it. But we usually don't go quite six times because if it doesn't work by the fifth, I'm calling it and we're doing another song. But the 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 heart of the matter is is I don't believe that we've been any of us have been forced to work for Jesus Christ. And that's what where it says um 
It's a privilege. Proverbs, and I'm, I didn't put a note with this, commit thy works. Proverbs 16 and 3. Lady, grab that one. And then Proverbs, Bill 3, 5 through 6. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Right. If we're working for the Lord, He's going to establish the thoughts in our mind. So then we're willing to go an extra mile. We're willing to seek the Lord first and lay down what we wanted and say, okay, God, how do you want it? And and wait for the answer sometimes when we don't know. Go ahead, Bill. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not under thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. So what that's what we're our goal is is to trust. Say it loud again, Bill. He's not even reading it. Well, now he is, because I made him nervous. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Right. Today, when my mind was scrambled, the Lord needed to speak to me. And I know he really needed to speak to me before that comment, because my insecurities had mounted so much that I don't know what I, how I would have taken it. But and, and I'm not poor me in. I'm really not. I'm trying to share who I really am, that I really face trouble. And Sister Linda has really faced a battle this month. We have faced it mentally, just as hard as physically at times. But the truth is, is that if we trust the Lord with all of our heart, and we don't lean to our own understanding, because it's fickle, you may feel wonderful this morning, and by the end of the night, mentally, you feel like there is no way I should even be in existence. I'm such a loser. You can. You felt like, whoo, on a mountain top. And with about three things that, meh, 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 and the kids do this, and then that happens, and the bill was due, and you forgot, and this happened, and then by the end of it, I am such a loser, I can't even believe that God lets me still breathe. And you were on the mountaintop, I got victory. No, I don't. We're, our feelings are fickle. Our heart is deceitful, deceitfully wicked. And it'll take you through a lot of loops that the enemy will jab you and try to get you convinced that you're not worth anything. But the Bible said, what did it say about seeking the Lord first? The Bible said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. We got enough evil today to have to worry about the marks. Just quit. I'm going to seek the Lord first when I rise up in the morning. When my eyes pop open, I'm going to try to have my mind stayed on Jesus Christ. And I'm going to try to run after Him. I'm going to remind us of a few things that Brother Michael said. Pray one more time. 30 second prayer. Lord help me. Then his mentor, Brother Kip, fall in love with Jesus. Pray, pray, pray. pray. Every time I pray. Pray, pray, pray. 40 times a day. Pray, pray, pray. Then I was thinking about the pearl of great price in Matthew 13, 44, where there was someone get to it. I hope this isn't too scattery all over the place. Sometimes my notes go all over and then I have to piece them together up here. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. And when a man hath found, he hideth and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls who when he found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. I think of someone sitting in this room who's seeking the pearl of great price and is willing to sell everything they have to have it. It's what it's going to take. 
for us to seek the Lord first. Go ahead, Lenny. Not a single thing that we're doing with our ministry right now, if it's not in the Lord's will, and if it's not what we feel like He needs us to be doing, no matter how much money we make or how big our audience is, if it's not in His will, then it's nothing more than a pretty song or background noise or a speaking voice. It's, it's meaningless if it's not if we haven't looked to Him and had Him show us what we're doing. It's nothing. Well, all the growth and impact that we've had as a ministry is not meant from our efforts. Yeah. It's been from the Lord magnifying what we are willing to do for Him. Right. And if we try to do things or amplify things of our own right. without Him, it will come to nothing. Right. Not all the talent in the world could have accomplished what the Lord has done through our ministry. Right. And really, that was just my thoughts for today about the ministry. Yesterday, I may have had another thing that was running around my brain that I needed to know, Lord, what should I do? And all of it, because not everybody's doing what we're doing, so to, to put it all together, it's not saying that what you said, Melanie, was wonderful. But what anyone else is thinking about anything you do if it really doesn't glorify God it's a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal and so Bill just chase me the Lord says I'll bring the rest Laney got lots of decisions both of you just chase Jesus. He'll bring the rest. That's what he's bringing. And he's bringing it to you all out there. Chase the Lord. Chase his will. Chase what he wants for you. In the sickness, chase Jesus. In well times, chase Jesus. In finances high, chase Jesus. In finances low, chase Jesus run after him you know run after him in uh, peaceful times run after him in all the things that are at unrest run after him because that's really what the Lord wants sometimes the only reason you may walk through a battle or a mental disturbance of your mind of how on earth are we going to dot 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 Many times the Lord is only wanting you to pay attention to Him. So I want to I want to give Him the first part in every part of my day. The first priority in every part of my decision. And I want Jesus to have the first place in my heart. And I say this. If we as a family if we as a ministry, if we as a church, if we as a body of Christ, if we as a world begin seeking God first, what can we do for Him? Everything. I thank the Lord tonight. I feel like He's going to give us some help. He's going to keep helping us. He's going to keep blessing us. I want to say this because I know that afterwards I may have to fight the enemy. In no wise am I stating that we are in need. Anything I thought about and thought about monetary anything tonight, please don't feel that I was saying that the Lord has not met our needs and wants. But I, I'm saying that people have reached out to us to say this is how you should grow this is what you should do and my mind was wondering what that's we should that's why we have to make a conscious decision about it because the right. Lord has supplied our needs we don't need that money so that's why well and 
because we don't need it do we want to have it to make our industry better for other people and, and we not don't for know. us you right know, not we for don't us know and, and, but i just want to clarify those thoughts were not born out of how can or what can i it was out of just that people have mentioned that different people have mentioned ways that things could be better just or different and i don't know what the lord wants but other as far as the specifics but i know what he said to just chase him and he's going to bring the rest and i'll trust him for all of that bill i just wanted to say that two people on youtube have already commented that this is the message they needed to hear and there are eight or nine people watching on youtube i you know i don't even know how many people we have about you know 70 people watching on facebook and you know, who knows how how many people it is so others have needed that <coughs> I appreciate you telling me because let me tell you there are times that you stand behind the pulpit and don't know if man did I just say all that for just me did anybody get anything I was saying did I just ramble on Amen. but I appreciate y'all letting me know I also appreciate your prayers all of you that are listening and will listen please lift up the Highland City Refuge Church of God we're under attack um, and please lift up the Turners and our, our family and the band and uh, all the people it's not just the immediate family that work on all the things that we do i appreciate our church we have a lot of helpers that help us um, several helpers that are helping us with different parts of the ministry and um, i say this if the lord will just keep us humble and let us love him he'll take care of it all right. and i love him that's the very best thing mary sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. And Jesus said she, had, she has chosen the good part and it won't be taken away from her. Yeah. And so if we do as she did, rather than try to be busy around the house and doing this, that, and the other, if we will sit at Jesus' feet and listen to his words, if we will put him first, we will be choosing that good part and it will not be taken away from us. Meaning that when we sing a song, we'll be there. Right. When we preach a message, we'll be there. When we reach out to people, we'll be there. We'll be right. there at his feet. Right. And he'll be there counseling us as we do it. So right. that's where we are. And and if you're in any wise seeking the Lord of how you should minister, start at his feet. Right. How he can minister to you is how you're going to be able to minister to others, and he will take care. He'll bring the rest. He'll bring the rest of all that you need. I appreciate the Lord. I appreciate all the comments. I appreciate y'all helping me tonight. I appreciate you letting me bear my soul. And there still being a room full and a screen full of love for someone who sometimes feels very inadequate to do this job but Jesus Christ is my hands and feet I'm trying to be his I'm trying to be let him be my mouth Bill will you dismiss this? Lord thank you for giving Sister Lee the message that we all need to hear and thank you for helping us to know what we need to do with our ministry Lord, help us to chase after you and, and give us the rest that we need, whether it be physical things or just rest in our souls. Help us to be able to uh, continue loving you throughout the week. Help us to uh, have a good service on Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless y'all. We'll see you Sunday remote. And we pray that the Lord will just give you rest and all that you need. Come here, Loria. Which one works? Love each other. God bless y'all.